Hey guys, Bala TW here, and we're going to be taking a look at these Fortnite Korea Open qualifier games. This is going to be the games that led up into that charity event that happened, the Fortnite Korea Open. And here's the format. Again, this is going to be the qualification games for that charity event. That was the one where Myth, Nick A30, Tifu, Kitty Plays, Yo Yo Keep It Up, More Gaussi, and, and everybody else played in over that weekend. And yeah, it's going to be two heats. And 48 players out of the two heats are going to qualify for that tournament. And they're going to end up playing in some solo events and some duo events at that charity event. We already saw the charity event, so I'm kind of casting this as a uh, prior type of thing. This is a pre-recorded. And we're taking a look at the format right now. If you look at the bottom left of your screen, obviously I don't read Hangul, but I can glean from this basically the format. It's going to be very similar to what we're used to, except each kill is going to be worth a point. So the kill thresholds in terms of the th third kill, fifth kill, and seventh kill are just going to be extra points. So if you get up to three kills, you're going to have an extra point for breaking that three-point threshold, and then three points for all the kills that you had at up to that point. So three kills would be four points, five kills would be seven points, because you broke the three one and the fifth kill threshold, and then seven kills would be... Uh, 10 kills or 10 points total and that'd be the max that you could well that'd be the max thresholds you could get you could get additional points per kill so big bonus is always activated essentially and then furthermore you get the normal points from placement top 10 will give you a point top three will give you another point and the first place will give you another point and i said that we would be running two heats if you can see those numbers in the top left you can actually see match one and match two those are the two heats and there are 75 players in each heat-ish. I think the second heat may have a little bit more, and the, the first one is definitely 75. But overall, the top 48 from both heats. So it's not a kind of each heat gets 48 players, and you'll have 98 players or 96 players or whatever it would be. It's going to be 48 overall. And yeah, this is actually happening live in Seoul, South Korea at the Facebook Gaming Arena. The Fortnite Korea Open qualifiers, and you can actually see the event space is very similar to what we set up over at TwitchCon and the PAX West qualifiers, and you can see all the players getting ready, getting set up, and we're going to get a look at some of those matchups, and some of the names might be familiar from that event, and you're going to have a little bit of spoilers if you watched it before. We'll see how I do with that as we go on, but some of those names that we talked about, Horde, Aim Hero, Mesengi, Milfi include, Fax Fox, those guys all showing up. And we'll see how they do today. I'm interested to do to see what they're doing. Basically, the whole goal for this is not only for me to get some casting experience under my belt, but to take a look at these Korean players and give a, an English casting voice and an English perspective to the games. So I hope they go well. I can't wait to see what real competitive Korean Fortnite is, and this is going to be our first look into that because the charity event, while all these players that qualified are playing there, you also had a lot of Korean celebrities, influencers, YouTube stars, very similar to like the uh, Twitch Twitch Rivals events that we had in the Summer Skirmish, for example. But regardless, getting a look at all the players, and I'm sure we'll get more familiar as time goes on throughout this. Because we'll see how these players progress. Who's going to come out on top? Who's going to be our most impressive players? I haven't really gotten a chance to go through these games beforehand, but I did get a gl glance at the format. So we were able to figure out kind of exactly what the format's going to be. And again, we'll, we'll get more familiar with these play players. <laughs> but I'm going to be uploading these game by game, one by one. And I believe there's going to be three games per heat. So we're going to have a total of six games. I could be wrong about that, but that's what I'm going to go with the assumption of for now. But guys, let me know if the Korean uh, broadcaster's volume is more or is balanced enough. I don't want to kind of have them be way louder than I am. I do want you guys to hear the fact that there are Korean commentators in the background, but I want to be the, the main focus point. And so, Horde, yeah, we saw him in the next event. He qualified. I, I Maybe I shouldn't be spoiling, but these are just the players that I have seen before, and we'll see how they do tonight. Again, it's going to be weird because the format seems to be a little bit different. I believe there's a point per kill, so... Melona. Melona. I gotta listen to see how... Oh, it's interesting. He has the earbuds and the headphones above it. So this is like the classic esports way. We didn't have to do that at the Fortnite land so far. But 
They want these players to be in the crowd. They're going to need that noise canceling. This is very common, especially in Korea. They showed the way in terms of noise canceling. Put the very noise canceling headphones above and then some earbuds inside of those. It's a little uncomfortable to play with, though. I've done it a few times. And yeah, so from what I've seen, what I've seen in terms of commentary on these games so far is that these players are very aim heavy and they have very strong building skills, but their end games are very weak or, or very uh, blunderous, I guess I could say. So, oh, look at those diamonds studded. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I love OGN's production. Again, this is happening. This is an OGN run studio, the Facebook gaming arena in Seoul, South Korea. You can see the branding all over the side of the wall. That branding is exciting. I really hope OGN is going to be getting into Fortnite a lot more. I believe there's another event that they have planned in California, I want to say. And I don't know anything else, but I really hope they get much more involved. Ooh, controller player, Morgan. Let's go. So it's interesting that there's actually controller players in Korea as well. I, I would I would expect Korea to have a lot more uh, in terms of PC players, but here we go. First match underway. We'll see how the bus path differ or the um, the bus distribution on the map differs from the NA scene. And so far, it looks like yeah, it's it's typical right now. We only have one player down at the uh, the Westworld area. Unfortunately, they already moved off of that. Those casters already spoke about it really fast. These guys are so good. Korean casters. Oh, my goodness. We have a pickaxe battle right off the break in Fatal Fields here. And he's going to run away. But I don't. he could get a gun and, and pop him in the back. So this is very risky for him. He needs to find some cover very fast. No, nope, there he goes. Volko takes him out. Here's Aim Hero. He's all the way down in Flush Factory. Again, this is before Season 7. So we don't have the snowy area in the bottom left of the map. No planes as well, but it's not the pop-up cut mode, so we don't get mats per kill or or HP or shield per kill. So Aim here is going to be uncontested here at Flush. He obviously does not necessarily know that, but looks like he has a strong guess that that is the case as he just continues to farm through. So here we go, Tifu having an engagement for sure here in Shifty Shafts. Looking at Lemon Candle up above. Does have a decent loadout, the AR and the pump, so he's very comfortable taking fights, but he's trying to trying to hide himself, trying not to be spotted, trying to get this player by surprise. Lemon Candle, they definitely had an engagement before. You can see the HPs on both of them are a little bit low. And Tifu keeping very quiet. This is really good for him. Actually, Lemon kind of find found a mini. He's going to be able to shield up all the way up to 50, so he has the advantage now, but he does not have that pump. Tifu making some noise. Lemon Candle knows exactly where he is now. And this is going to be very tough, actually, for for Tifu. He needs to make sure he keeps the distance. No, 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 sorry. Tifu needs to get in his face. Lemon Candle needs to keep the distance. Without that pump, it's going to be really difficult for him to deal with Tifu's purple pump. And so here we go. Actually finding the really good angle here. Oh, Tifu finds a slurp though. So if he does not engage fast, it could be trouble. He did take that slurp. It's ticking now. I'm going to throw some dynamite. This is going to do two things. One, he's going to be able to get away with the sound cues. And now he spots him. Yes, he's going to be able to find the advantage. There it is. One shot. Two shot. Oh my goodness. That last headshot takes him out. And Lemon Candle, unfortunately for him, that loot didn't favor him. He's going to go down there to Tifu. But another engagement here. Looks like a star tail player. Star tail something. That Alpine Ace skin in the retail row. Oh, he's actually maybe is going to get out of here. I think he just skipped me. He beeps his on the way out. He's just going to quad crash his way right out of here. And head over towards the Nam's grocery store. And he did spot that chest, so he's going to try to get in there. But another engagement here at retail row. Retail row being gone in our version of the game. And <laughs> this guy getting pinched on both sides. One player at the studio, one player at this little parking lot area or concession stand area I guess I should say and Jin Kin now running away getting away from this Red Riding Hood skin the one who did take out that player from the side he had to scope to AR so that was easy work for him and here we are in Pleasant Park actually Alvin takes one out with the double barrel nice play by him getting into that engagement very fast taking advantage of that close close range and back to retail row we are Jim and Kim gonna try to lob some nades this nade might land no it's a little too far but 
he's going to return fire now <laughs> with the dynamite. And that actually could take out the bottom of his port fort But no, did not make it all the way. He's got that six shooter. He's got the pump. He's got more nades. He's going to try to do what he can. But oh, actually, that nade almost bounced right on top of him. But really, engaging the scope there is not going to do work, do anything for him with that six shooter. He does get one tag. Can you get another, another tag? A headshot with that six shooter. Takes down the shields a little bit. That's going to do a lot in order to bring this fight back to his favor. Bring it back to a little bit equal. He's going to farm up as much as he can. He's hitting these, even though they're not much materials, he's going to hit them all the way down to get at least one or two more building pieces, and he does that. So Now, he actually does show himself, but that player still doesn't realize he's spamming the Deagle. Jim Kin, if he can just wait just a little bit, if he peeks his head, he can get another headshot with that six-shooter, and maybe then the engagement would be equalized, but... We'll see that player finally backing up. He does not know where Jim and Kin made it to, and he's going to build up, get the high ground on him. And this is really good going for Jim Kin. And now this player knows he has been duped. He's down on the low ground. He doesn't. Oh, actually, he's going to build up. There's a pump shot all the way to 95. This has been equalized, but the pump is good for Jim and Kim. And the Red Riding Hood skin does not have the pump, but the AR is so good. He's down to 20. He's down to 1 HP. Jim and Kim just needs one pump shot. No. Can he get it? He falls. And this is so close. Jim and Kim just needs one shot. And there it is. 1 HP remaining. I cannot believe that. Another engagement here going down in Pleasant Park over towards that treehouse. But a. Uh, Wow, Alvin just dives over. I don't know. I think maybe the shockwave grenade. Those are out of the game for us now. But Alvin flying directly over using that SMG. Ooh, this might be rough for him. Actually, the shockwave using it to disengage, using it to gain distance as he can. But that exposed him a lot. Luckily, Flash was not able to punish him for that. And so, going to continue to try to approach. He does have one more Shockwave Grenade using uh, these builds to go up. Oh my goodness, trying to get all the way away with the Shockwave, but does he have... He has one more. He is going to be able to get all the way away, but he goes right into the back of somebody else. Bakyu does hit him once, and there it is. Bakyu takes him out, went right into that other player. That's the problem with these custom games. A lot, a lot of players are everywhere along the map, so... If you go one place, you're going to find one player. You go another place, you're going to find another. You can actually see on the map there's somebody heading over towards that Der Burger Rift. And so, no no matter where he went, he was going to be in trouble. But here in Salty, Sung, Sung Ho is getting pressured here. The scar on this player, he's going to rotate his stairs to get away and then move out his turtle a little bit more. Ooh, he does get the roof, but no, he's not going to replace it. 400 mats on this player that's pressuring, so he's going to be able to do what he can. No explodes for him in that grenade launcher. He's using a lot of his ammo. He's starting to get down. That SMG is actually out, so he's not going to have a good swap. And Sung Ho is actually on the back foot, switching to metal. He might be out of materials. He's trying to get a medkit off, but no. Okay. Yeah, this is metal for Sung Ho. So he is in trouble. Metal might... Okay, there it is. This player really not replacing, so that's interesting. One thing already we see in terms of difference. He's not replacing that pyramid at all. Just trying to get shots, just trying to waste his mats, and no, he actually does have a lot of mats. Interesting, he switched to metal, maybe to, to throw off his opponent, and now switched back to wood, so no, actually no, the player got it above. He did capture that pyramid, so he can continue to pressure that floor, but no, he does not want to continue to waste his ammo, and he's too uncomfortable to go in with just his pickaxe. We see, we've seen Zexro make plays with just the pickaxe. And yeah, switching to that metal, we've seen topics, we've seen this discussed a little bit. Switching to the metal to fake your opponent out that you're out of materials. Oh, he does get the wall though! And no, we switched off. Somebody getting taken out over here and now, oh, the dance comes in as well. A little bit of taunting, I like it. We know for sure these Korean players are very active in their taunts and this fight is still going on in Salty, trying to take over this wall. He did get one, I believe, but Sung Ho must have rotated the stairs. And ended that very fast. This is the way to do it without wasting any ammo. He does get the wall sung. Oh, though, he returns fire. That pump, very strong. He's going to take him out and reheal. So there we go. Ooh, the heavy sniper for Fax Fox. Trying to pressure this player. He does not have. He only has 300 mats. Ooh, the edits goes in. And he's not going to edit it close, so he's just actually going to move away. I, I'm not sure whose who's edit that was, but Fax Fox does have that heavy sniper to pressure any more box. Any more of this player's one by one, he can jump down and use that to great effect, but he might disengage here depending on where the circle is. Again, remember, every player is going to try to pressure. Bakyu actually engaging map. We saw this kind of um, 
Baki took out the player earlier on the Pleasant Park Hill, and now he's in trouble. Not placing a pyramid on top, maybe baiting this player to try to fall in. Maybe he has a trap of his own, but we're going to see this player's going to stay up above. There is the pyramid, so definitely trying to bait or do something so that Matt would fall down. Yeah, these fights are actually taking a long time. Not too much in terms of pressuring the boxes. They're seeming to want to take it a lot more careful. You can see they're very worried about people editing on them and so on. So that's what I'm noticing so far. Baku definitely needs to try to make do with this situation. One player on top of him. Matt doing a really good job of staying aware, making sure there's nobody coming over the hill on the other side by Pleasant, but they do need to get to the zone. There's only 28 seconds till it begins moving, I believe. This is the second circle. So depending on where he is in that circle, Jim and Kim takes down another. I think Jim and Kim actually went down, but here's Bach View. This is the other side of that engagement we were seeing in the box. So he actually places a pyramid down. This could be good for him, but it was a little bit worrisome to start. That pyramid gives you a little bit more versatile versatility and Matt actually getting the pyramid on top while that happens. So Baku, ooh, includes coming to third party now and Matt needs to be very careful now. Baku's gonna extend this. Ooh, he does use the deagle to take him down and that was the perfect opportunity but he didn't get any damage done. Actually, no, he did. Matt is on the back foot now. But again, we have to be very careful. This player coming to third party, include, is on the back. He's actually gonna leave that fight now. We can look at him on radar. Nice deagle usage and there it is. There it is. Hold on, I got to mute my notifications. I appreciate the sub, though. There it is. Horde takes down another player over towards that, uh, looks like the chair area. And there's Include at the end of that engagement. Looks like Bok Yu did get the better of Map. And now he's going to actually end up getting the third party Include sticking around for just enough time. Bok Yu actually heading out away from the circle. Maybe he did see Include at first. Now he's going to box up. He's in such dire straits here. Include coming from the front. Aqua Cafe, Cafe from behind. And there it is. Aqua Cafe, just like we were talking about, comes in from behind and takes him out. Baku, you, your run is over. He did get two kills before going down, though. Include actually has two kills of his own. So we'll see. Already 33 players remaining. This is the second circle starting to move just now. And these players need to start making their way towards the circle. Aqua Cafe actually not picking up the minis. That Baku had, oh my goodness, he almost he almost falls all the way down the build. No, he did actually, it just wasn't as high. Mapsin getting a kill is again. Here's the ping 90 of Fax Fox up above, pressuring GGK. He's going to try to get a mini off. And we shall see. No, these are not live, guys, in the chat. These are not live. These happened about three weeks ago. This was the qualifier games for the event that we saw on Saturday. I'm just giving an English POV on top of it so these players in the zone now are just barely out you see fax fox is actually doing a little bit of gatekeeping but ggk not gonna have much trouble getting the zone he doesn't place the pyramid above and there it is ggk getting the pump to the face and now fax fox in good shape he's gonna use that deagle gonna pick that up make sure he has that ability to break the structures flash going down from rocket and now actually these players fighting in the zone one med kit for him. Envy is comfortable fighting here. Almost takes down Fax Fox, who's gliding across. Use that launch pad that he just got. And Envy almost grabs that kill, almost grabs that point. And we'll see. I would like to see what the uh, the standings are in terms of who has what in terms of kills. Like we see on the English broadcast. But for now, Fax Fox. Did make it into Tilted, but gets beamed again. Cont oh, that's actually Envy coming all the way through. And, oh, almost. He does get, does manage to get on top of the Trump Tower. And Envy making it out of the zone as well. But another engagement we hear down below is that Envy. What is going Ah, that's Aqua Cafe and Envy. They're in an engagement down below. We heard a trap go off. And Fax Fox wants to join the fray. No, he doesn't. He's going to go over towards that umbrella. Using this grappler to great effect like Spider-Man across the sky. And interesting that this chest has not been looted. That's one of the first chests that you usually see looted in Tilted Towers. Envy pressuring Aqua as much as possible. Gets the window edit and that's it. Gets that kill. Here we go. Sange in an engagement as well. Build fight. A nice 180s. It's going to take advantage but the Deagle coming in from the side. And now this player is going to decide, hey, I don't want to go high with you. I'm going to stay out of this. We got to get the zone. I got to make sure that I survive. He's going to disengage Sange. Getting that, the fortunate end of that. See Mesangi in the background. Backhoe having a lot of trouble getting into the zone here. 
No, we'll see now. He's definitely trying to disengage. He's using this pyramid. We can't th see through the edit, but he's using this pyramid to edit, to, to edit peak. Has that full stack. See Milfi in the background. Sparkle, Benny, all starting the turtle. So definitely some turtling going in. Horde getting pressured by Greenwing, but that's not going to go well for Greenwing at all. Horde that picks up another kill for himself. And that AK, if he wants to pick that up, he does have the gold scar, so... No, he's going to opt to stay on that. He's not exactly in the zone, but he does not have a long way to go. You see Envy still in Tilted Towers, one of the only players remaining in there. So we'll, we know that he took down... Oh, we know he took down Aqua Cafe from earlier. Now, Horde actually with the great stack. Does not have the HP, but look at the materials for him. Max brick, max metal, 500 wood. He's not going to have trouble farming back up either because there's only 24 players, but here's Hanju Young taking... A lot of damage from the third party. He's going to go down. The third party's getting the better of that. That's include again the third party god so far. He's taken out two from third parties now. And he does have three kills, so that's four points, I believe, for him. <coughs> Excuse me. Now Horde getting into the getting in the zone, just like we said. And again, 22. There's the there. Oh, he's going to use that campfire. So he does have actually have a full stack. We we're talking about how he didn't perfectly have it but we know he does now he's gonna get to full hp with that campfire turtling just on the edge something i noticed he wanted to use this campfire before he's starting to move towards the next zone so that he does have as much opportunity not to take any hp damage he doesn't want to take any more so he wants to have it all towards shields and now a lot of players making that early rotate we see two players are getting close to each other fax fox actually still here in tilted we see more players joined up in here and we hear that heavy sniper down below. I'm not sure where. Oh, there it is. Hunzang underneath. Inside of this taco building. Only 35 seconds. These players have to finish this engagement. But Hunzang is going to just opt to wait for Fax Fox to start moving, to start moving on his own. He's going to start making noise now. Actually, this might not be what he wants to do. Fax Fox could find him. He's using that stair to edit. There it is. The Deagle. Nice play by Fax Fox. He's using that stair to edit to his advantage. And Hoonsong is on the back foot now. He's going to go ahead and continue to pow power through this stair box. This stair. Ooh, actually Hoonsong on the other edge with the trap. No, Fax Fox all the way back down. He needs to try to use this chug. I think he does have enough time. He is on the good side of the circle here, but that trap was so perfect. Hoonsong using that to great effect. His own trap there. And here's Meisongi, perfect position in the zone, all the way centered on top of the hill as well. This is going to be the first moving zone coming up next as all these players try to get in, but he actually shoots his own stairs. And we're coming down to it, only 20 players remaining. Here's Fax Fox, who we saw use that grapple to such great effect over and tilted, but now trying to get out of the zone. This is the player who did get trapped, we just saw. And now he's going to have trouble. He needs to find Y out. He needs to find him now. He does. Another kill for Fax Fox. He is going off with this Deagle. A lot of good plays. Very interesting how he's using that so far. And Autobahn to Milfi spams him down. No chance for him. Tried to getting spammed on two angles at the same time. That's rough. Sparkle doing the same to Katku Katugi. And include takes down Fax Fox. Actually teammates. A little bit of team killing going on. Fax Fox finally goes down. His rampage through Tilted is over. Only two kills for him. But we saw some really nice play. Kaktugi just ahead of us just went down. And there's the first moving zone just now revealed. Three players already there. Two more players getting in. Oh no, Milfi with the turret. I don't know if this is before or after the turret nerf. So we'll have to see. But Milfi using that to great advantage. I believe he has three kills of his own. Sparkle regaining control is this two by one here. And he does get it. Not that great material positioning for him, but again, we're low on players in, in terms of what we are used to. There's only 15 remaining. That's definitely because of that kill incentive. It's a little bit of a stronger kill incentive than we're used to. We do have those thresholds, but we do also have plus one point per kill. So the thresholds are just extra points on top of the kill per point. Or point per kill, rather. So now. Ooh, the grapple for Horde. This might have been... I think he picked this up off of Fax Fox. And yeah, there's only three shots remaining in that. It's not going to get him all the way... It might get him all the way to the zone. He's going to try to get Rabbit, though. He's going to sneak behind him. Rabbit trying to mini up. He needs to get in this box. He's going to find it. Oh! Nice play by Horde. Just getting into that box. 
spotting exactly, knowing exactly what's going on, but Horde goes down himself, but he did get that four point. Mesengi using this rift to go, or yeah, it must be a rift to go. He's very high, nobody paying attention to him. He might be able to get in this one by one. If he's good, if he's close enough, he's paying attention. No, I, I think actually the zone is right on the edge of this hill. So it's not going to move any farther into the zone. That one by one is not going to be there. He's going to dive on that hill and get probably the best position, Meisangi. Yes, greatest position. He does have about 1,100 mats. It's not going to maybe last towards the end. It depends how this plays out. But here's Aim Hero as well. Only z zero kills for him. Gonna pressure Milfi down below. Milfi not in the greatest position. Getting spammed from all corners. Milfi in trouble. That's actually Misangi also spamming him. Aim Hero gonna actually stop now as Misangi declares that truce invalid. No more teaming onto that player down below. Misangi really in a good position here. The zone going to go... I believe on towards the rest of it. Actually, Sparkle in trouble, getting spammed again from both sides. Aim Heroes trying to get him down. There it is. That last pump shot does it. Sparkle goes down. Ooh, Aim Hero gets a grappler. That's going to be so perfect as he needs to get over this hill. Again, yes, Meisangi has such a good position. So turned, but Aim Hero taking so much damage. And this view is showing us how people are rotating. Malona ahead of the pack. Aim Hero getting in, going to be able to drink some minis. Maybe getting to get this big shield off. I don't think so, no. He's going to actually take the opportunity to take that shot. And he doesn't take him out. Meisangi from the high ground takes him out. So there's four kills for him now. He's starting to turtle out. The double floor pyramid, he needs to go a little bit lower. Yeah, he recognizes that as it, as it continues to go down. And there it is. He continues and continues to go down. Using a lot of mats, though. He's starting to leech above. But yeah, I'm worried about his mats. He's double pyramiding everything. There's two 90s to go up a little bit higher to get a little bit of better angle, but Aim Hero's going to make it in this zone as well. Mapsin, you're so close to going down. Meisangi, another kill for him and another threshold. So that's two two kill, two kill, points for that kill. Aim Hero's in such trouble. I'm not sure if he can make it out. Only five players remaining. This is top five. Aim Hero really needs to get this big pot off. I don't know. Yes, he definitely has time, but no. Somebody pressures him. He's definitely keeping an eye on him. Moon doing the best job at keeping Aim Hero from healing. He must know he's low. More damage coming in. Malono getting beamed. Meisangi, actually, Meisangi not moving. Include another kill. He's up as well. Aim Hero goes down. Meisangi gets two. And it's top two. Meisangi, no match for him. This zone is going to be impossible for him to continue through. So include all he has to do is protect himself to get the win here. Meisangi trying to get the heavy snipe through it. 22 more seconds to die. No. Meisangi, seven kills for him, though, in second place. That's going to be 10, 10, from point, 10 from kills alone, I think. And then 12 points total, I think. What a great showing from him on that high ground. But include also getting that win. Nice play by him. That's going to be game one. Finish. I think that's 12 points. We're going to wait for the standings and then we'll move on to the next game. But there he is. Include the winner of that game, I believe. I hope they give us a header. No. Who's this? We'll find out soon. Meisangi? Is this include? Is this top include? Is this Meisangi? Who's this? Aim Hero? We don't know. Thumbs up, though. We'll find out soon. <laughs> Peace everywhere. Yeah, that was an interesting game. I, I really like the uh, aggressiveness. They're very aggressive. We only saw like one or two storm fights, but players are very, very aggressive. They're definitely holding people. They're gatekeeping as much as possible. And we saw Meisangi actually get the better of that towards the end game. So that philosophy of surviving to the end game Definitely going to be paying off in terms of who is going to get the most eliminations towards the end. So, yeah, that was really rough though for Meisangi. I, I think he definitely did not realize his match situation was not as good as he thought. And he ended up with, um, with what I think was um, like... I think he only had like a collective 15 mats over everything, but he didn't have anything to get in the next zone. He couldn't go down because he would die. He didn't have the grappler or anything that he could use to uh, to save himself or catch himself. So that was an easy cleanup from Include, but I'm not sure what Meisangi could have actually done besides realizing that Matt's situation was a lot more dire than he, he thought. But again, it paid off anyways. I believe each kill is a point, so... 
It's really good for him. We actually see a lot of cameras on one player. So we'll see. No, okay, there's two players with cameras. Three players with cameras. There it is. Mapsin in third. Actually, we didn't see much of this player at all. We didn't see him at all. So we'll see how many points he got. But I believe, I believe this is third in standings, not third in terms of... Uh, in terms of placement in that game. But yeah, guys, I'll be going to my chat screen soon. I just want to close this out for the for the recording. See where players are ending up. I love Korean broadcasters. They're so much fun. They're always laughing. And they're so insightful. Like, I wish I could have... Tra like, if somebody can translate Korean... You you'll make a freaking once once OGN once Korea gets involved in Fortnite, you'll you have a good channel going by just translating what the broadcasters are saying and just posting those games. You have a lot of views there. So Mapsin getting third in that game. I, I really want to know how the pro, the points broke down. I really want to know. This is going to give us confirmation on what the format is exactly as well. Because Meisungi should have had 12, 10 from kills. And two from placement. <coughs> but we actually saw 90s there. We saw like we saw pretty much all the techniques that we normally see. I did see like a one build fight that was like a little bit sloppy. But again, in North America, we don't see like the best the best mechanical players really shining like crazy, except for like Dwayfo and um, like Snood. They shine. I mean, everybody, obviously, yeah, there we go. Here's the standings. Meisangi, Include, and Mapsin. Yeah, Include, we, we know he had. So let's try to let's try to understand this. Let's try to understand this. I'm going to pause this here, and this is going to be the end of this this recording here. But Meisangi had seven elims. That's what this says. It says he has 10 points from elims, and then I think this is two points from placement. So Include got three points from placement, eight from elims because he had six elims right so that's top that's five or so that's six or it's six elims so six kills six points from that and then two because he was above five right so 11 points for him yeah so there's the format we finally know it and um yeah sparkle we saw that guy getting pressured by like millions of different people aim hero at three i i kind of i'm interested i, I kind of like this format so far um we'll see though definitely Reduces the lag, reduces the amount of people in the end game. But that's going to be game one, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out. We'll be going to game two shortly. <laughs>